good questions. This is a slide that you can see up in the corner. It says Cal Poly. I copied this right from Melissa Furlong, who's our Cal Poly rep. She gave me permission to go ahead and use this slide. They called this reads. Okay, when they, I, I like the word readings. It's really the computer reading. It's not a person doing a reading. It's a computer running through the process. And they, they run your application twice. They, they, they let you compete initially, and the first reading, you're competing with those four factors. It's a pure academic four factors reading, okay? Yes? Do you know the specific weighting of each one? We don't. They don't publish that. They used to. Because of lawsuits and stuff, they ended up, they were advised by the lawyers not to advise it, <coughs> not to give out that information. So that's what we were told. Um, so the first reading is a pure academic read based on those four areas. And there are a certain percentage of their slots are filled by those students. So basically, they take the information from your last three phases of your application, you're ranked with a scoring, your, your generated points based on these factors, you're lined up based on your um, points, and it's cut off wherever, however many spaces they're gonna allot for that major for that period of time. Does that make sense? Okay. Then they take everybody who didn't make the first reading, who did, wasn't selected by the first reading, and they run for a second reading. And this is where your question comes in. And this is where some extra things are looked at. First of all, California residents who were re who uh, recently released veterans. If you're a veteran, California residency, recently released, you get extra bony points. You know, if you're service area, service area is only based on your high school. It's not based on your community college. So a lot of people say, well, go to Cuesta if you want to get into Cal Poly. You do not get those service points. It's based on your high school. So whatever high school you went to, if you're in their local service area, which runs from Lompoc to Paso Robles, you get extra bony points. What do you mean by the service area? Service areas, um, we all have service areas because we're public institutions, so we have areas in which we are to serve the community. And Cal Poly, uh, Quest is, sorry, Cal Poly service area is from Lompoc to Paso Robles. Every CSU has an area that they're supposed to help create options for opportunities. And then if you're a California Community College junior transfer, which all of you would be or else you wouldn't be applying, um, you get extra bony points, which means it really just helps you if you're competing against people applying from other CSUs, UCs, private schools, or out of state. What about international students? International Community students colleges. are not, they, um, International, I didn't publish that slide because it's, it's really more for our level, you know, but international, I can show it to you. International students are, have a whole separate application evaluation process. And then the SB 1440 applicants. Do you guys know what SB 1440 is? Probably not. Have you ever heard of ASTs or AATs? Many of the STEM students might not because you might not have some. Yeah, the associate's degrees for transfers. So um, if they, you get a GPA boost with Cal Poly, it's 0.1. It's a GPA boost, boost of 0.1. But it gives you, you can look at it. If you didn't get in through the, through the first reading, then it may come into play in the second reading. Yeah, did he just translate into GPA boost? Um, they translate into points, is what they do. Oh, okay. Yeah, so they give it a boost, but it has a point associated with it. Okay. And then your mother and father's level of education, basically if it's um, a low, which is I think like you're a first generation college student, you get a boost there or uh, extra points. And then if you're faculty and staff dependent, you get extra points. And then they do a second reading and they fill the rest of their slots. Yes. If you get through the first reading, do uh, things in the second reading add to your points? No, that? you're already in. The first reading, you're already in. So basically, they've already filled a certain percentage of their slots with just academic information. Mm -hmm. And then they take everybody who didn't get in and fill another percentage of their slots. Because you're, that in, you're accepted to the school? You're yeah. conditionally admitted based oh. on the, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Following, everybody, am I 
Is that everybody following okay? What is a faculty slash staff dependent? That's if your dad or mom works there. <coughs> I was one of those. My dad was a professor yeah. for 35 years. Okay. All right. So let me kind of translate this into the Cal Poly, into the application, and show you kind of where this shows up. Um, this is CSU Mentor. Hopefully most of you are familiar with it. This is where you go to apply. Um, I'm going to navigate my way through it here until I get to my sign on. Yes. If you want to, you are more than welcome to bring up the computer and sign on. So once you've created your logon and you have your account going, you come to your application manager. My colleague Ashley Brackett, who is our STEM counselor as well. We have, we have me and Ashley. Um, we give application workshops all the time, so she's gone on and created her own. Um, Page here, pro account here, so I would just use hers. I want to show you because the channel islands really tough. So this is the application. It's a dummy application that we use. You can see that there are pages one through twelve, and then we go to the reviews application. Does everybody see that? Okay. And they all, these pages are all consistent for every CSU. So such things as filling out your name and your address and personal information, California State Residency, the college information, that kind of stuff. You won't have to do high school preparation if you're going to junior. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to go back to my app manager. Christine, if you have a bachelor's degree already, basically you're disqualified for Cal Poly. No, you're not. You can't get a second bachelor's there. Well, yeah, it is a second bachelor's degree. Limited spaces, but they're not, they're not, they're not deducting points. You have a bunch of All right. So, screens one through 12 the same as every other CSUs. And now this is where the money is, right here. 13, 14, and 15. That's where you want to pay the closest attention. And this is where everybody starts to get burnt out at the end of the application. Right? So this is really where it matters. Can we do the pages out of order? What? Can we do the pages out of order? Um, not, I don't think it will save. That's the problem. You can skip and jump around the application, um, but it won't save your material. So don't do them out of order. Yeah. But what you can do, is get the application kind of like work on it and then take a break and come back to those pages the next day when you're rested. Work up to those applications. Up, well, excuse me, work up to those pages. Okay, so we are going to go to page number one. So, this is a computerized version of how do we determine your extracurricular work activities. Four questions. Your average number of hours that you worked per week over the next 12 months. You just pick a range. Any range that sounds right to you, that is accurate, and is not lying. Was more than 25% of your work related to the Cal Poly major of choice? I usually don't allow a lot of my students to put no here, because when we do when we have a conversation, like for instance, I had someone the other day who was applying to business and works at a gym, and he's like, that's not related. I'm like, in business, do you work with people? You know, are you providing customer service at the gym when you're working the front desk? That's related. That's, you're earning, you're getting work development. So, consider carefully 
It's just a yes or no. As long as you can see the connection between what you're, where you're working and where you're going in your career, the answer should be yes. When would that be verified by it's not. Macaulay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. No. Nope. Does it matter if you have a lot of hours or a few hours? I don't know the answer to that question. To be honest, I don't know. I don't know if it makes a difference in the points of that. I don't know the answer to that. That's a good question. I just tell students to be, you know, to to be honest. Yeah. You know, I mean, but but also don't undermine yourself. Don't, you know what? So it's not verified. But don't lie. You are going to sign. You know, you are signing off saying everything's accurate and true. Yes. Love this question. No. There is nowhere do you list what you are doing. And the reason is, I'll give you the rationale behind it, is because unlike the UC application, this is a completely 100% objective process. There's no subjectivity that goes into it. And so for someone to look at it and say, oh, well, you worked at Taco Bell and you worked at an engineering firm, Hers is more valuable than yours at subjectivity. Does your concentration have any, like, does it, does it matter? No, it doesn't or matter. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, in other words, you don't compete against people who are in the same concentration. You only compete against people in the same major. So. Okay, and then no, average number of hours per week involved in community service, athletics, art clubs. This is, um, they know that this is really written from a, a lot of like freshman applicant perspective. The transfer student is very complex and unique in itself. And so, you know, do you do anything outside of the classroom? Do you do volunteer work? Is there things you do in the community at all? You know, and estimate it. And then, are you familiar with serving in, in a leadership capacity? Have you served in some sort of leadership <coughs> capacity. You don't have to be the editor of the yearbook here, or whatever, because that doesn't exist for most community colleges. But you know, have you served in a leadership capacity? Evaluate that for yourself. Yes or no? That's it. That's not the left. That's the extracurricular work experience. That's the extent of it, right there. Okay. Now here. So this is the transfer supplemental, and this is where you're going to fill out um, information that's going to tell them the GP that they're going to calculate, whether or not you're G certified or not, and whether you have courses that they're looking for. And you go section by section. If you look at page three of your handout, they follow this pattern. Now, what Kate wasn't able to do, but what we do, is we plug in all of our courses that work for these sessions, right here. And we tell students if you have these courses, this is what you'll be plugging in for paradise. So the rules of the application are that you go through each area and for <coughs> any class that meets that category, you plug in the grade, the units, and the quality of the units, whether they're semester or quarter. And the grade can be, you need to make sure if you have any AP credit, you're getting, you're putting in your AP. If you have a D in a class or an F in a class and you plan to repeat it, but that D or F is still on your record, you have to plug it in. And you plug it in twice. You plug it in with the D and you plug it in that you're in progress and plan. And you go through and you can plug up to four classes per area. Now to answer your question, how many courses do you have in your calc series? Three. Three? Okay, that doesn't help me. 
Um, so your whole linear algebra is... Okay, all right. Are you guys on quarter or semester here? Okay. So you have Calc 1, Calc 2, differential equations, linear algebra? So five. Okay, five. Okay. Well, you can plug in four. So if you have all the whole... So you have five classes that you take to complete calculus and differential equations and linear algebra. Okay. Well, you get to plug in four only, which means you plug in your four highest grades. And that's the rules of the application. So if you got a C in one of those classes, and you got A's and B's in the other four, that C is technically going to be in your self-reported GPA, but it's not going to be calculated into your admissions GPA. That's nice for you guys. <laughs> Yeah, the highest, yeah, and why would you do that? Because higher units, better GPA for uh, more weight in your GPA, right? What if, like, some of the classes are, like, in progress or class? Okay, good. So this comes back to her question, like, what if I have a D and I'm repeating it? Okay, so I'm going to use Calc as an as example. So you have those five classes and you can only load in four. If one of those classes was like a C or a D or an F, and you can plug it, and you only have space for four, and you have some in progress or planned, again, I would utilize my highest grades plus my in progress or planned to, to fill in that section with, to the best, to represent you the highest of your GPA. <coughs> so I, you could get away with leaving off a D or an F if you can fill it up with in progress planned or good grades. So you could do um, three grades and the one that you got a D, just put it in progress. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. But if if you have a D grade and then one's in progress and you don't have enough to fill out that whole four, you have to load it in there. Could you put the D grade and then repeat it saying also in progress? Yeah, but they won't be able to know because, okay, let's take for instance chemistry. Your general chemistry sequence, is it two classes? Okay. So let's say you got an A in chemistry, general chemistry one, and then a D in general chemistry two, and then you're repeating it. You would be putting however many units it is with an A, how many units it is with a D, and how many units it is with an I in progress of plan. But they won't, they won't, so the grades will be averaged together as they are in your self-reported right now. Yeah. Because it's not eyes looking at it, it's a computer. Correct. Right, exactly. So if you say it's in progress or plan, you need to make sure you're in that class in the next semester then, or else they'll have the opportunity. Correct. So when you load in, when you load in, um, in the application, we'll ask you to list the classes that are in progress and the classes that are planned. Not only when are you filling this section out, are you taking into consideration the courses that already exist on your transcript, you're taking into consideration and loading in what you're currently enrolled in and what you plan to enroll in. It's a critical part. GPA and you have in progress or planned classes. Mm -hmm. There's a course in there or? No, you put, there's a, I'll show you. Oh, see? There's a, there's an option for in progress and planned. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Please don't use that in your approximate GPA. Class. Oh, in your self-reported? No. No, no they, you're right. Happen. They don't, it's not calculated into your GPA. The GPA that they're calculating from this area, it would, it would be <coughs> nine in it. Yeah. You would have, but, but you want to generate the points for having the class. Mm -hmm. um, so along those lines, if you're putting in progress <coughs> and you're repeating a class and you got a D or an F in it, does it incorporate the D or F into your GPA? Yeah, because they don't know that it's the exact class that you're repeating because you don't load the class in. So yeah, it's in your GPA at the time. So just really, really quickly though, that brings up the question of if you are like, because you're doing the year before you go in, does that mean you plug in all of the classes that you're going to take as you're uh, in progress? Yep. So you do those before you can give them the classes that you've already completed. You, so you, are you in your last year? No, I'm not two years. Okay, so you'll be filling out this application next year, right? So you'll be filling it out while you're in your fall term and you'll also have a spring term left. So you will fill out, you'll plug in your classes that you're currently enrolled in as in progress or plan for the grade. 
And then any classes that you're planning to take in the spring, that's why you want to wait and watch to make sure the spring schedule is accurate, going to work for you. Then you plug in anything that you plan with this as your grade. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay.